So Go 122 release, and there's a lot of features about it. A lot of people are excited for it for good reason. There's some features that I really love, and there's some features that I think are, you know, meh. One of the major features I'm excited for is the Net HTTP Standard Library update. I think that's gonna be super exciting. That's what this whole video is about. But one deserves definitely a mention is the update to the for loop in Go. You can definitely check that out, as well as all the other release in the official Go 1 and 22 release note. Link will be in the description below. Go ahead and click it. But let's get to the part that I'm most excited for on Go 120. Too. Enhanced routing patterns. HTTP routing in the standard library is now more expressive. The patterns used by the net slash HTTP dot server mux have been enhanced to accept methods and wildcard. That's exciting. Registering a handler with a method like post slash items slash create restricts the invocations of the handler to requests with the given method. A pattern with a method takes precedence over a matching pattern with that one. Wildcards in patterns like slash item slash ID match segments of the URL path. The actual stepping value may be accessed by calling the request dot path value method. A wildcard ending in dot 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 like slash file slash path must occur at the end of a pattern and matches all the remaining segments. This is very exciting. I really love this change. What this basically tells me is the standard library, the standard slash net slash HTTP gives us a much more flexible, much more versatile routing to use in our HTTP servers, our APIs, whatever it is, whenever we're spinning up a Go server. And if you're someone like me who prefers to make CRUD apps or whatever, you know you've probably been using different libraries like Chi, Jin, Gorilla, etc., to kind of handle the routing for you, especially if it's not something too complicated. And this is going to be perfect for spinning up something quick, something dirty, and actually gives us more flexibility than what this snippet of text may give us. And just to follow up with all that we just said, Go version 1.22, is there any point to using third-party libraries. This is just from Reddit. As the title says, Go version 122 has brought changes to language that make it unnecessary to use Gorilla Mux for complex route handling. However, is there still any benefit to using a web framework for Mux or routes like Jin? Or is it preferred to only use the standard library now? And I think the best kind of answer to this comes from this user nice discussion 2408, which says, for simple servers with like a dozen routes, yeah, the new Mux in 122 basically removes the need for third-party packages since you get methods and parameters. For anything more complicated, you'll probably want to use something like Chi. And that is kind of the summary. That is the best way to summarize what everything we did here. And before we go too deep, I still want to say that I do not think this is the death of Chi, Jin, Echo, etc. All these popular routers for Go and building Go HTTP services. Now, I do think a lot of the case you can see here, you know, the simplicity of just creating and routing something with the Chi.router. Maybe that won't be as popular, but I still think Chi, the library like Chi and other libraries have a variety of examples and a variety of use cases, one being the middleware, one being the grouping, a lot of other things that come baked into Chi if you go deeper into it. So I do not think this is kind of the depth of those libraries, but having this in the Go standard library definitely gives it a lot of flexibility and versatility. <laughs> All right, so you can see here, I have an empty Go project, uh, Go122. There's nothing in here, but I want to showcase the new functionality of the standard HTTP package in the library. So let's go ahead and import it. Go ahead and declare a mux, which is going to be http.newserver.mux. And let's add some fields. So mux.handle funk. And this is we're going to showcase some of those new features. So you can actually put get slash path slash. And let's do a function here. We'll take our HTTP response writer, our HTTP request, and it's going to return a function here. And all this is going to do is fmt dot f print w. You have hit the uh, path. Boom. Let's add another one. Handle funk. And here, let's just do task slash the wildcard feature, the ID. Let's go ahead and copy all that. All right, so now that we have all that defined, so we can actually get the ID. If we go back to the documentation real quick, you can see here, we can get it with the request.path value. So jumping back in, we can do R, which is the request.path value and pass it the string of the wildcard that we're expecting, which is ID. And then here, we can do the same thing, format.f print f pass w say the task with ID and let's just do a string and then pass in our ID. Perfect. Now we can do HTTP dot listen and serve. We're going to pass in the port. Let's go 80, 90. I don't know why. And then give it our mux handler, which you can see here. New server mux just gives back a server mux, which is a struct here. Pretty standard in the library. But we can go open up. Actually, before that, 
that, let's go ahead here and type in format and just do print line listening. Okay, perfect. Now let's open this up. Go run main dot go. Perfect. Let's open up a new terminal. And now we can do something like curl local host 80 90 slash path slash. You can see here you hit the path. Perfect. It hits our first route, which you have defined. And now the more interesting one is we can do slash task slash one, two, three and bang the task with ID one, two, three. And we can change this to three, two, one. There you go. The task with ID three, to one. So we can do a lot of new, cool, interesting things with this new Go 122 handler. I think this just adds so much more flexibility to how we're going to spin up apps. And the fact that we don't need to depend on anything else, I'm going to show you a quick example of how you can do this with Chi and how you can, it's hard to validate to use Chi just to group our routings now with this new net slash HTTP upgrade. Now you can see I just did a go get github.com go Chi Chi version five, just following the instructions on the actual official GitHub page. And here I've just kind of declared the exact same code I had, uh, but now using Chi, you can see the main difference is we have this Chi new router, if you check what this is. So new router returns a mux object, which implements the router interface. You can check what this is. And you can see it's pretty similar to what the actual server mux that we get from the Go standard library is. It even says it here, mux is a simple HTTP route multiplexer that parses a request path, records any URL params, and executes an end hand which is kind of what the new package includes out of the box. And you can see here we define our functions the exact same way, but this time, instead of using this chi URL param, we can just kind of take it from the mux standard library. You can see here, it's the same thing. So we can clear this go run main dot go can go here, curl local host 80 90 slash path slash. There you go. And here we can just do task one, two, three, just do format dot print align listening with Chi. Now let's go here, go run main dot go listening with Chi. Perfect. Now we can do curl local host 80 90 slash path slash got path. And then we can go here, change this to task slash one, two, three slash, and then handling task with ID one, two, three. And we can change this to three, two, one handling task ID three, two, one. This kind of just makes using go out of the box that much more attractive. I've always talked about how one of the best reasons of using go is the fact that you don't have these third party dependencies. And it pains me to say that, you know, it's if it's a nuisance at all, but it's just kind of nice to know that you can you spin up go mod in it. And I mean, that's it. You can just continue writing your code there without having to install anything. Now, of course, the more complex your application gets, the more there is a need to use something that's been built by a community and has proper maintenance. That's a whole different conversation. But something that this upgrade go 122 provides for the slash net slash HTTP package is just something about it. It's, it's, it's it's a chef's kiss, but I wanna know, what do you guys think of this package? Do you like the upgrade? Do you hate it? What do you think this makes for the entire Go ecosystem? And are you excited for future changes that may incorporate that Go eccentric feel where we can use everything outside the box of Go without depending on anything third party or whatnot? But I wanna know, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, comment, like, and subscribe for more. You got a power.